So Gitpod. Gitpod is a tool that it's broadly used at 4 gigs. We, we cannot even imagine running a course without it. We cannot even imagine having a student or someone learn any coding related skill without it. We've tried not having it and it was a complete nightmare. So let's let's understand during these following minutes why. Why is it a nightmare not to have it? What it does, how can we use it? And I'm gonna also talk about the disadvantages because of course there are some disadvantages. And I don't want you to focus too much on them. And the best way that I have for that is to convince you on how amazing it is. So please bear with me for the next few minutes and you'll see that it's gonna change your learning experience from today on. So what is Gitpod? Technically it is a coding environment online. So what that means is that instead of coding on your computer, you're gonna be coding on Gitpod's computer. And that's amazing because if everyone codes on Gitpod's computer, everyone has the same computer. Not the exact same computer, obviously, but a very, very, very similar computer. So it doesn't matter if you have a Mac, a PC, a Chromebook, an iPad, or a TV with a keyboard. You know, it doesn't really matter. Like it's everyone's going to be the exact same computer. It's going to be Gitpod's computer. And that's amazing because the, the number one reason people stop learning coding related skills, it's because it is really hard to start. Like if you want to install Python in your computer or if you want to change the version of Python because the tutorial that you're following is in a different version or the version of Node. Like it's really painful sometimes or installing Postgre that is a SQL server for databases or installing Jupyter Notebooks as well. Like there's so many tools to install when you're learning coding related schools like machine learning or blockchain or anything that it really doesn't make any sense to install it in your computer. That's not how professionals do it. For prof professionals do it. They use something called Docker that is also used in Gitpod. And hopefully you are watching this video in a few years from now and Gitpod has been broadly uh, adapted in the world now. Uh, in addition with similar tools, right? I'm sure that in the future, coding in environments like Gitpod, it's going to be the standard, the de facto standard. So let's start, let's get started because we don't have, I don't want to talk too much and we don't have that much to talk. So don't worry about it. So I already said why I already said, what is Gitpod? The disadvantages are that sometimes you're going to find that if you don't have an internet connection, obviously you can't code because you're coding on someone else's computer. So you need the internet to keep coding. That's a problem, right? It can be a problem. That's one of the disadvantages. Another one is that since it's in the browser, the experience can be a little bit slower than in a real, uh, like a local environment. There's a workaround for that, but we're gonna talk about it during this course. We're not going to be talking about it, but it's very easy. And we are going to be talking about it further on down the road. So this image here, it's, it's got, explains pretty good what's happening when you are using Gitpod. First, let's see what happens to you as a student first. The first, the first time you see Gitpod, you're gonna see it like this. You're gonna be in the middle of a GitHub repository. If you don't know what a GitHub repository is, don't worry. But you're gonna be in the middle of it and you're gonna find a button like this, opening Gitpod. Or you're gonna be on 4 and you're gonna see a button like this, start new exercise that says that it's being implemented with Gitpod. Or you're gonna be in, Git, in uh, GitHub and you're gonna have the Gitpod extension and you're gonna see this green button. Probably not the first time you use Gitpod, but one of the first times. So either of these three buttons are the same. Basically what they do is that they, they start a coding environment from GitHub. So what is GitHub? Quickly, I can tell you an introduction to it. Basically, Git, Gitpod is GitHub, my bad. I know that the words are confusing. It's Gitpod, GitHub, Gitpod, GitHub. You have to just remember the difference between them. GitHub will be more like a hard drive where the code is. 
Like for example, if, I, if I'm doing an exercise about Python, I can just put here Python in GitHub and I will find probably a lot of exercises about Python in the world, like done by many people. So for example, this one, a bunch of algorithms implemented in Python. So I can just open this with Gitpod. So basically what's happening there is that Gitpod is saying, okay, which files do you want to open? Which files? So GitHub will say which files, and then it will send those files to Gitpod. Then Gitpod will create a computer, an actual Linux computer, a Linux computer. Why Linux? Because it's the most standard computer in the world. Everything is deployed in Linux. So we want to have an environment that is very similar to the environment in which applications are being published. So like I said, GitHub will send the files to Gitpod. Gitpod will create a computer for you. And then it will attach to that computer a coding editor. And then it will show that computer to you inside of your computer. So that's super weird, right? Because you have a, a Gitpod's computer inside your computer. It's something like that, right? Because you don't want to have your computer. You want to have some Gitpod's computer so that you have the exact same environment that everyone else. So everyone else will have the exact same thing. If there's another laptop tomorrow, imagine that this is a laptop. I'm trying to recreate the exact same picture here. So GitHub will send it to Gitpod. Gitpod will grab the coding environment and it will create a new computer. It will send it here and it will also send it here. So basically these two people will have the exact same computer, not the exact same, but very similar, right? It's going to be computer number one with these files this specification and this coding editor and then computer number two with these files this this computer and this coding editor so everyone will have a very similar learning experience and environment so when i click on the button let me click on it on this one what's happening right now it's what i'm telling you right it's 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 called creating a workspace or preparing a workspace a workspace is basically the combination of these three things that i was telling you the github the gitpod and the Visual Studio Code coding environment, uh, coding editor, it's gonna provide it to me right now. So in a few seconds, you'll see how it stops bouncing and it already creates the environment for me. It doesn't take much. As you can see, I didn't stop the video or anything and it's already here. So most of the time it's gonna be pretty fast. And then what's happening now, you see that a lot of things are happening. Don't touch anything yet because we need to wait for Gitpod to finish initializing the environment for us and I think that's it. Now it is initialized. We have a coding editor that is called Visual Studio. It's the most popular coding editor today. It's the one you're gonna be using as a developer or as a machine learning engineer or as a blockchain engineer. It doesn't matter what coding skill you have. You're gonna mostly be coding in this editor here. And well, in this case, it's a tutorial, right? So this tutorial has steps that I can just continue, continue and continue and do one of the exercises every single time. So it's super cool because it takes me by the hand, right? Like the style tag. And then I can start doing the exercise in HTML. This is an HTML CSS uh, exercise. So basically it's telling me the instructions here and I have to follow the instructions and then I can, uh, when I finish, oh, by the way, just to finish the video, how to save my progress, right? So there's two ways of saving your progress. I only wanna speak about one of them that is the easiest one, because I want you to move along in the course. Later on, you can see another one. But the main one is that it is already saved. Isn't it cool? It's already saved. You don't have to save because it's already saved. That's super cool. And why am I saying this? Because Gitpod, it's gonna keep track of all the computers that it has provided for you. And you can, you can retrieve them in, in one of two ways. You can say gitpod.io slash workspaces, and you're gonna see all the workspaces or computers that it has created for you. So you can see this green one here means that it's running. It's the one that I was just using. It will tell you from where it comes. Look, it comes from the tuto CSS tutorial exercises. So that's great. And it has previous ones, one that I created seven hours ago, 17 hours ago, two days ago. So maybe you're asking yourself, okay, but if I have so many computers, how will I know which one it is? 
Well, I encourage you to rename them. So this one, you can say CSS exercises I did on June 2nd, whatever. And then the second thing that I encourage you to do, you can see here how the name has changed, is to pin it like this. If you pin it, it will not be lost. Please remember that if you don't pin it, it will be lost. It will get deleted because Gitpod is always deleting these environments. You see how many computers do I have? Like I'm not deleting any of this. It's going to delete automatically if I don't pin it. So please pin it. And what happens tomorrow? Let's say, okay, tomorrow I want to continue doing the exercises in the exact same place where I left. Well, you're not going to see it in green anymore. You're going to see it in gray like this one's. You're going to come and look for yours and then you're going to click here on the three bullets on the three dots and you're going to hit open. After you hit open, you may or may have not run a command here in the command line. So let me show you. I think you will not have to, but you may have to do it. So if you see that the instructions are not on the right side of the screen anymore for this tutorial, here they are, but let's see that let's say that they're not. So I'm gonna close the instructions. I close everything, right? And then you're gonna be able to type here in the command line, and I know that you don't know the command line yet, but it's a very simple command. You're gonna say learn pack start. Learn oh I did a misspell, my bad. Let me make this bigger so that you see what I'm seeing. So I'm typing learn pack start. When I do this, the instructions are going to come again to the right side of the screen. And I can continue in the exercises. Obviously, you're going to have to find the exercise you were doing here. The good news is that the ones you complete are marked with a green checkbox. So you're going to be able to see which ones you have already completed. And you, you can also remember which one you did, right? And you can go back to the previous one you were doing before. And that's it. So I hope everyone understood. There is a way that you can save this later on to GitHub again, so that you can re-upload it to GitHub like this. Like, remember that we downloaded it from GitHub to Gitpod, and then Gitpod grabbed the coding editor and it put everything in our computer, right? So there's a way in which we can re-upload it to github now to save it forever right github doesn't get erased not like our computers even if we lose our computers the workspaces are going to still be in GitHub, right but we can even put them in github that is how professionals do it we can create a new repository and do it there we are not going to see that today but because this is enough for you to continue with whatever you were doing i hope you guys liked it bye bye